This is the NeoBooks call on Monday, July 1st. I don't know how we got to July uh, 2024. It's kind of nuts. I, like it, it was January moments ago, last I can tell. And now we're past the, uh, the summer solstice and the days are getting shorter and ah. I've done with winter. I know, but we're hitting stride with summer. I mean, like it's feeling summery. Uh, in Portland, we're going to get near 100 later this week. Yeah, 102 degrees on Saturday. <clears throat> oh wow, we have we have not seen that. Yeah. I was in I was in the valley uh, for my aunt's 86th birthday at a at a picnic grounds, and it was 107, Ooh. and it's going to be 117 in my sister's town in the valley, Manteca, this week. It was we had a heat dome two summers ago or three summers ago here in Portland where it hit 116, 117 for four days. You'd step outside and it was walking like walking into an air fryer. It was bad. Yeah. You do not want to you do not want to be in 117. The only other time I've been in 117 was in April and April and I visited Petra and we went down to Wadi Ram and stayed at an unair conditioned sort of little lodge down there. And I actually didn't find it that horrible, but but only when we got home and I looked at a picture of the map I had taken on our way out, did I notice a little thermometer in the corner of the map that read 117. That's the only way we knew that it had been that hot. Wow. Kind of crazy. No, no, 117, you can't breathe. I mean, and we lived in... Uh, it, was, it was a dry heat, as they say. Holy <laughs> smokes, that's, that's hot. Yeah, it, 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 it's pretty warm. And then everybody knows about wet bulb temperature and how it affects humans yeah and this is why portland is is dangerous because even 100 degrees in portland with that humidity so we are staying at the hilton hotel which is just like two blocks to the back Impressible. one into the air conditioning the chest. <laughs> oh that's right the festival is going to coincide with the heat wave ah perfect wow yeah i only i only just realized the overlap um how is everybody excellent good to know good to hear good to see um i've i'm i'm making a little bit of progress on describing neo books and making nuggets but i haven't recorded any of them which is the thing i need i need to sit down and record like 100 nuggets of uh, on different topics now um and i've been kind of lining them up uh the queue is not elegant yet so i'm i'm sort of almost prepared to do it but uh, but it feels like a whole bunch of things are overlapping here that that uh, the Neo Books project seems very relevant to. So I'm I'm liking that a bunch. Um, uh, also, I talked with a guy who runs a kind of a loose federated network of people called Quorum One. I'll put a link in the chat to Quorum One. His his name is Hank Holiday. I don't think I've mentioned him here before. Um, and he says there's a few people interested in uh, in in his network interested in the neobooks project um they may join us next week i will see um also i, I um, they extended my demo on butter and um are you all interested in going into butter and trying it out again this is the uh, alternative uh thingy go ahead pete i'm not not interested not okay actively not interested no, I'm not not interested. Oh, you're not not interested. Okay, okay, okay. So you're throwing a double negative on the table. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'm I'm willing to try it. I don't know that I'm about to jump off of Zoom, but um... I, yeah, yeah. I don't. I I don't. So it's Butter is designed for people who facilitate events and want to have more tools at hand for that task. So they built it on purpose. If you were going to do polling and go pay um, Mentimeter, and if you were going to do a whiteboard and go pay uh, Miro, and if you were going to go do a couple other features and go pay each of those suppliers, they've they've got those features baked into Butter, which I'm not at this point using yet. Um, but it's pretty elegant. I just haven't figured out all the moving parts yet. A lot of those things are now built into Zoom as well, by the way. Um, that does not have not quite as well, but yeah, it has polling, it has whiteboards, it does it does have a few things like that. That's true, not, not quite as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so let me change a setting or two in in uh, 
But before we do that, um, yeah. I, I have a suggestion of a little bit of NeoBooks business. Please. Um, having been away, and I, I guess everybody's kind of been on hiatus maybe, um, but having been away from NeoBooks for a little while and seeing the interest with which uh, the OGM community is talking about, oh, there should be a NeoBooks for blah, or I wish I, you know, I need to do a NeoBook or whatever. Um, I think the idea and the concept has got good traction. And I think it's, uh, I, th I think it's the time to have a path to publishing. Um, so I think a lot of people, when they think I need to do a neo book, um, they don't, you know, they, they probably actually, I think they don't know what they're, they're really getting themselves into, but, <laughs> exactly. um, I, th I think they would go, yeah, that sounds great. Nuggets and, and multimodal, uh, outputs and all that. That's yes. I want that. Of course. Um, I, I live in a neo age. I need a neo book. Um, I think right after that, then they're going to say, and, and you help me publish it. Right. Um, so I think there needs to be an answer for that. I don't know if it's this crew or a partnership or whatever. Um, but <clears throat> I feel that like that's like sorely needed for new books. And I can also report, uh, having been part of, you know, a, a couple, well, it's it's funny to switch from neo books to I, I've I've been a part of a couple of publishing efforts for books <laughs> because books is maybe not the best uh, implementation of a neo book. But anyway, um, the the uh, act of publishing an ebook or the act of publishing a print on demand book is pretty straightforward um, and not something to be scared of. Um, so I there's a you know there's some kind of virtuous circle of conceptual stuff and uh content stuff and uh actual rubber hits the road and output stuff which is output to web and output to podcast and output to video and output to print book and output to ebook and until we have that virtuous circle complete and and we can say yes 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 um i think we're going to keep bumping into people being disappointed Maybe, maybe you say disappointed in he's disappointed in what kind of expectation um i you know i the I, let's let's take an arbitrary persona i i can imagine kevin jones you know kevin jones has got a hit idea in his head i know a ton about microfinance and i know a ton about community economic development and i know it and it needs to be out there uh i'm going to go talk to this neo books guy and get it out there so as soon as we say uh, that's great, Kevin. We have the uh, the idea of how to get that into multi modes, and we had it, you know, and and but we don't actually do the publishing yet. I you you should figure that out, or you know, I, I hear you know Pete has done that. Maybe you could go ask Pete or whatever, right? As soon as Kevin hears, mm, but we do don't yourself. publish neo books. <laughs> yeah, we haven't. We we you know we don't do that, or we don't know how to do that, or we don't know people who do that, or whatever. I think that would be, uh, he would feel like he bumped into a wall with, without realizing the wall was there. He'd go, mm -hmm. oh, okay, let me take my business elsewhere, is what I was expecting to say. So, so Kevin actually may drop in a little later. I had a conversation, I mean, I'm, I'm exchanged with him, and he's interested in writing in your book. But if for the same reason that, that, uh, that uh, I'm you know, writing it, um, the, I mean, for me, the, the neo book really was to develop a knowledge base and, and sort of an agreement with the chatbot on what are we going to look at and how we're going to do this. Um, in fact, I mean, the, the, the chatbot, when I, when I ask questions, actually refers to, you know, just like we developed in the, uh, the what's my first book called, so the, the Story of Soil. I mean, it actually refers to the story of soil, you know, in order to respond. So that material has landed, you know, it's in there. And so for Kevin, and then of course that allows me to to um, you know ask more uh, more complex questions, and I get tremendous answers back because they are channeled, you know, they are, they are focused. And so I see that more. I mean, to me, the new book basically is train your GPT. Uh, to accomplish what uh, what you're after, and this is what Kevin is now interested in, because for him, you know, to to 
to chuckle so many balls in the air with all the materials he has and, and so much uh, things and then to connect this in ways that uh, advances the conversation, right? That's that's pretty challenging. But once you have it all in your chatbot, you know, then that consolidation of knowing uh, uh, is is intuitive. It's just close. Yeah? So so I see that more as the role uh, for for uh, for the neo books. Yeah? Um, I have a conversation later uh, today. I mean, Pete, we have one, but. Um, I got an invitation by by this uh, IT group here, um, and we're so we're meeting tonight. There's one one guy sits in Australia, the other one in Switzerland, and then the team uh, is here. Uh, they have developed a blockchain technology that's like super fast, um, uses you know much less uh, energy. Um, and and so the idea here is that we're building a consortium with a co-op um, and, and and with 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 uh, CPG manufacturers and uh, farmers and you know and logistics and so on to move products from farm to market. Uh, so that's the 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 tech support for this group. Um, and they want me to explain this evening how I got to develop. Uh, an AI capacity like I have and <laughs> and uh and how this all works. Um, um yeah so so and then my 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 point really is you know you 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 have to you have to use um a process you know to train and update your your uh, uh, chatbot in in you know in in your field of expertise. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna. I put a link to the new to the Neo Books room I just built in Butter in the chat. If three of you will click on that link, I will then go. So hang out there for a second. I will go open it. If five minutes have passed and I'm not showing up and something went wrong, that means something went wrong. Come back here. But I think it'll work fine. I, I'm getting used to it. Uh, so please click there, leave this room, and then I will shut this room down and join you there. Okay. So you have to put in your email and. I think it asks you to, to register your email when you when you come in. If you want a, a summary afterwards, you can right. skip it. So we we, we may miss uh, Kevin if when he wants to come in later. But... I will I will post this link to the Mattermost and I'll send Kevin an email the, copying. The, the, the thing to do is just to leave the Zoom open. Oh, uh, but it's recording. Uh, should I just turn off the recorder and stuff? Yeah, but but probably. if he comes into the Zoom, he won't see a notification that we're not here. He'll be like, "No, somebody should stay here." I, oh, somebody, I, somebody I just leave, hang out. I can leave Zoom on on my computer if. Okay, so why don't I just uh, stop the recording? Uh, everybody, scoop over there. I will leave and assign the room to you, Pete, so that it, my camera doesn't get confused. Yep. Uh, and then we'll that'll work. That thanks for the workaround. Yeah. The elevator music was funny. Yeah. yeah yeah and uh and the button the that music. says join was grayed out and if you hover over it it says host hasn't joined yet or something like that oh interesting it's not quite not, not quite the, not the best ui to, smooth, to, yeah. to do it uh i will go paste this this into the matter most in case anybody else is trying to hunt us down kevin jones is at the door was he knocking? Yeah, yeah, he rang the doorbell. Dr. Jones, you're just taking your name in vain. <laughs> How's it going? Uh, you're muted by default, so you may need to unmute yourself in the butter interface. Oh, Pete's found a nice nifty background. To sign in to put my own though. Interesting. This is just a standard generic one. It's a generic. Gotcha. I don't know. It seems rather holy to me. <laughs> I generically I, holy. I'm hearing the sounds of angels in the background. Yeah, that should come with music. Kevin, we can't hear you yet. You have to unmute yourself on Butter. There's a little mute. If you hover over your icon, although you might be on an iPad. 
Uh, hold on. You, you're still muted. Uh, you I've, need to, I've just, yeah, I've just you unmuted uh, you. Okay, so I'm not muted. Yeah, I, I just unmuted you. The host can do that. <clears throat> well, this is kind of a nice little platform. Yeah. This is a, it's a basically a multi-party video, uh, video conferencing system designed for facilitators. So it's got automations and agendas and some extra widget tools and other kinds of things. So if you wanted to create a very structured uh, time boxed meeting, which is not my signature thing to do, but if you wanted to, this would be an interesting platform for it, but it's more expensive than Zoom. The facilitator, what people said next in that kind of situation the last time? Sorry, you uh, your connection burbled a little bit. What about facilitator? Yeah, I just wondered, you know, whether it, it, it says, you know, nine out of 10 facilitators said this after that response, you know, if, if you could just have a little, you know, AI Jiminy Cricket on you to say. So I had the AI conversation with them because they interviewed me uh, as a facilitator about well, how, do I, how do I use technology? And we started, there was a side conversation about wouldn't it be cool if there was an AI uh, agent watching and helping and what might it do? And it might do what you just said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm glad to be here. Neil books, I'm interested. As you were. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm joining. Uh, th thanks, Kevin. And we talked for a little bit in the Zoom before coming over here. I'm going to try to meld the two recordings uh, once I'm done before I upload them. Um, and Pete was saying that uh, he's he's he has he has been he stepped out for a while because uh, uh, we were all over the place and not getting very operational. But he said that getting to publishing would be really useful right now. Uh, so let's uh, let's do that. Um, I think that's what you said, Pete. Um, yeah. And I'd love to do that. That would uh, close the loop and make uh, NeoBooks work for more people. And Klaus said something interesting, which was yeah. Uh, NeoBooks for me is the ability to collect my thoughts and get them organized with the chatbot. Um, and the thing I wanted to ask Klaus right after that was, okay, so now you've got your thoughts organized and, and you, you've got a NeoBook. Um, how does that hit people? When, when does that hit people? Um, uh, how do people find out about the, the cool thoughts that you've got organized at this point? Uh, you're muted. Klaus, oh, you're muted. Sorry. I'll be on. Yeah. In the Neo Book One, I detailed that process. You know, I explained how how uh, I upgraded to four uh, uh, ChatGPT four, and which allows you a level of customization. Um, and in the personalization. Um, I laid in you know, uh, instructions that are maybe somewhat quirky, but uh, um, you know, they, they encompass my sense of ethics, my, my uh, value structure, right? Uh, and also my background. And so the, that, that's you know, when, I, maybe ask, when I asked the GBT, what, did, what do you know about me? You know, it, it had a complete uh, summary of my background. Now I'm very concise. And uh, then from there, you know, then you go into okay, let's talk about stuff. You now and then, then I went. What I was what I was interested in is uh, how do you publish? Um, wh where do where do people read your new book, or the listen only, to it, or watch it, or whatever? The only place where this is located so far is on on uh, Google, you know, on our Google site there. Google Doc. Yeah. So. I mean, we have been talking about doing some form of publishing and I've been waiting for it. I mean, I don't really have an urgent need to publish this thing, but I think, you know, as we progress, they're, they're, it would actually be very helpful you know, for, for, to, to explain yourself um, in, in that sense. I mean, for example, I can show this to Kevin, you know, and, and uh, explain what I have done. And Kevin can copy the same process structure with his information, his data, because what I think ultimately will happen is that the these GPTs um, are being built by advanced practitioners. You know, so, so you have people like us with you know, 40, 50 years of professional background, um, and we can consolidate what we know and, and get help uh, uh, on top of it. Uh, and uh, and then lay in 
uh, a knowledge base you know, into this GPT and advance it you now, because as the conversation advances, uh, the GPT advances. So in my new book, Volume Two, you now I'm dealing with you know, uh, uh, nuggets basically that seem almost random, but they all advance the conversation you now into into a more into a more um, uh, topical into more topical issues. Um, I, I think that's really cool. The, the thing I wonder, and, and so my hypothesis is that neobooks should include, how do the next 10 people experience your thoughts? Um, how do the next 100 people, how do the next 1,000 people, how do the next 10,000 people? Because even if you've got your thoughts really well organized, I think if they're on a Google Doc, I'd, I, I'm not sure that that's going to sing to the next you know, 1,000, 2,000, 10,000, 100,000 people which it should be, right? Um, so I think publishing and, and pub, uh, publicizing a new book is, I, forgive me for thinking so, I don't know if that's true or not, but I, th I think it's an integral part of the new book um, process is, you know, how do I get my thoughts in front of 10,000 people um, via podcasts and videos and, and GPT conversations and, and ebooks and paper books and yada yada articles uh you know articles in popular press whatever if if that doesn't happen all of your thinking hasn't gone anywhere right maybe 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 you've got that solved another way maybe you don't care maybe it's just been good enough to get it assembled and then you could go to a more traditional thing and find a publicist and find a publisher or whatever i don't know and well <laughs> it's gone oh and he's right back, right when you snap. That was pretty good, Kevin. <laughs> Kevin, are you there? Say, yeah, I was just yeah, yeah. I, I was just saying his it has gone somewhere because he's used it as a framing for his action. You know, okay. it hasn't spread to someone else. Yeah, I need I need a neo book that people will read uh, for what I'm doing. I need a a, a manual of this new uh, philanthropic investment platform that's uh, so grassroots. There's so many different things to think about. And the, the successor question to Pete's question about how do you get n period to uh, some number of people to experience your thoughts, the next few, is how do you get them to actually read it? But then I think what we're interested in is how do you get them engaged in improving those thoughts? Uh, we, we don't, this isn't a broadcast only project. This is a community wisdom project. And there's a difference between the two. Uh, in, in that in one, you just, it, it's just about scale and broadcast and how do you build reach, uh, you know, uh, frequency and reach or something like that. In, in a community approach, it's like, how do we help people use this information in their own contexts? How do we help people remix it and make their own works, all that kind of stuff. So we have a different, um, a different goal here, which doesn't obviate or preclude the broadcast, but is, I think, more interesting and potentially more powerful than the broadcast. I, so, I completely agree. So maybe, Go ahead. Maybe, maybe I'm off. My vision for this is that the the GPT that I have created and the one that Kevin wants to create is unique in a sense that the knowledge base it has and the value structure it embeds um, is re a reflection of of our you know uh, forty year careers uh, in in our business. And my vision would be to have uh, people use this. So I'm actually uh, uh, trying you know, to have uh, uh, Joel, my partner, um, uh, to up update the website or change the website into something where you can put uh, a membership uh, uh, door on it um, and then invite people to it. Um, where everyone uses that same base, uh, the GPT, because the more people are using it, the smarter it gets. And the more people are using it along the same frame, you know, the same line of thinking on farmers you know, looking at uh, the best uh, information available for their particular uh, development here, and then going through the supply chain and then even down to the point of developing the recipes that link back through the supply chain, that, that sort of thing. You can't, uh, uh, you, you, you need a chat GPT that 
is unique, uniquely um, uh, trained you know, for this kind of endeavor uh, because you need you need to, to go deep you know you need to go vertical in in a limited uh, uh, topic um klaus i think two steps down the road from what you're saying might be how does your corpus by which i mean the things you fed your gpt from which it's re making replies how does your corpus grow and amplify and improve maybe through agglomeration with other corpuses from other people who you really whose opinions you really love um, and, and that becomes the body of work that everybody is then accessing together. Um, and I'm, I'm out too far, too far ahead of where we are, but, but I'm trying to think of how does, how does your corpus get better over time? Partly it could be you, you federate or syndicate with other people whose ideas you really love. You're, you're basically vetting or, or approving them. Yeah. I mean, Shimon and I have exchanged thoughts. Shimon is working on the first thousand days of a child and the development of a healthy child. And um, he, we had you know, Gene Bellinger organized a conversation and we, uh, you know, I mentioned nutrition is critically important you know, for the development of brain and, uh, and, and, and a healthy formation of a, of a child, emotions and everything. So he inserted my uh, insights into his GPT. I his insight into my GPT, who now knows you know, about the formative challenges, you know, from a fetus to the first thousand days of a child. So, but you you need to get it into uh, into the base, and uh, you know, that's that's how uh, ChatGPT four works. You now you can get into your GPT and keep and keep uh, feeding it more more data points. It's almost it seems to be unlimited. I was having trouble figuring out where the queue is, but it's across the top. So, Pete, you're next in the queue. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, I like that a lot, Klaus, and and I like the idea of having a community in which your GPT is kind of an active participant, and people, you know, it, it learns from people. People. Like <coughs> that. Um, my my expectation of when i hear a new book and when i hear people say like kevin i i need a new book you know I, I super need a new book um a lot of that need i think is and i need to figure out how 100 people are going to participate with it a thousand people ten thousand people um so the the book part of the promise of the old you know classic books from 10 years ago 100 years ago 10 years ago whatever um, uh, a book isn't really a book unless it's been published and unless the publisher is, is popularizing it, right? So part of saying I authored a book, I published a book is saying I got it in front, uh, I, I got it into a um, publicity pipeline that caused it to be, you know, exposed to at least a, maybe a few hundred people and in the lottery system, to become one of a, a bestseller, right? It's going to maybe go from 100 people, 50, 100 people, 200 people, half of which are, are gift copies. It's It's got at least the potential for uh, an editor, a publisher, um, a, a popular press person to say, oh my gosh, this is a great book. These are great ideas. Let's make this into a bestseller. And all of a sudden, 10,000 people have read it, 100,000 people have read it. So the new books, the implicit promise I hear in neobooks is not just that I can organize my thoughts better than ever before, or that I can nuggetize them better than ever before, but that the neobooks consortium, if you will, maybe it's called that, maybe it's not, you know, the OGM consortium, um, CSC Publishing Inc., whatever, something can pick me up with my great thoughts, my great GPT, my, my backlog of video stuff and get me into some publicity pipeline where I've got the chance for a thousand people who need to hear about soil health or a thousand people who need to hear about community economics to actually do so, right? Um, and I think, I, I think uh, uh, Klaus, I think it's obviously, you know, it's, it's, um, uh, it's, press proceeding you you have to have the material before you can show it to a thousand people but just the fact that you have the material doesn't mean that a thousand people are ever going to look at it right um so even if you put it into a community uh, uh community management system 
um, and even if it's available, somehow enough people have to get moved across into awareness of it to uh, to matter. So that could certainly be external to the neobooks process. It could be a, a, a classic kind of marketing thing on on your side, or bio marketing, or you know, classic or or new age marketing. Um, classic or new age publicity, cl cl classic or new age publishing. But without that being part of the, the remit of neobooks, I feel like we're missing something. I feel like we haven't helped you publish your neobook yet. Um, so even though it exists, you know, it's not, I don't, I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Even if you put it in a community and make it available, I think that's not enough for it to go anywhere. It, it needs more push than that. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with that. I'm publishing on uh, on LinkedIn you know, newsletters, and these newsletters are actually nuggets from book two. So I'm, I'm and as I'm writing in the, in the next chapter on my, on my uh, uh, new book chapter two, which is basically Siri U, um, then then uh, uh, I'm I'm publishing it. So I'm adding it to my book, and then I publish it on these newsletters here, and they have been doing okay. I mean, they get uh, pretty good exposure, particularly because the audience is so targeted, right? Uh, I mean, the people I'm connected wow. with are all in leadership roles in various parts of the food system. But I mean, obviously, yeah, I would love to to, to do more, you know, and, and, and find a way of, uh, we, we have to come to terms with what AI is. Right. This is my, my, my biggest thing. We have to come to terms with what it is. And there's so much navel gazing, you know, about copyrights and you know all these stories. But the bottom line is it's a tool, right? And and how do you use it most efficiently and how do you put it to use? That that sort of and particularly considering that we're like in deep caca, right? <laughs> Currently. And so you really need to you need to really uh, uh, put your best tools forward. Right? Cool. Thanks, and and thanks for the the LinkedIn stuff that helps. I I, I think uh, you know along with that, I would also publish the Substack. Um, is a is kind of a no brainer, and then probably more than that. But um... at, at the risk of throwing in a digression, uh, I'm torn with where to public like the pose posse, whatever you know the other alternatives. Uh, uh, this is like, how do you publish while retaining a canonical version of what you published, but also get lots of distribution in other places is the question. Uh, where do you post first and do you then cross post? Do you syndicate? Like, what's a, what's a wise approach right now? Because I'm torn between, for example, uh, LinkedIn, uh, Substack, and uh, Massive Wiki. I, the, the simple answer is you, you just do it. Or a, a different way to state that. <laughs> right. uh, a different way to state that is uh, that's a fascinating question, and you know we've been discussing it for 25 years, and it doesn't matter. Um, like Klaus did, put your material together, start publishing, um, and it doesn't. You have to do. You have to do all of them. Is my thing. You have to do LinkedIn. You should be doing Facebook. You should be doing Substack. So the order be damned. Blog. Um, it doesn't matter, right? It, it's it's going to be a horrible mess, and it doesn't matter if you're not doing it. It doesn't, you know, you're not saying anything. And if, my problem is, if, is if, if I kind of need a checklist so that I know that each one went to each place. Otherwise, I am going to lose complete track. I will be, so you make know, make a checklist. Yeah. Uh, go to Monday right. or you know, uh, whatever whatever task management you've got yeah. your ChatGPT and say, hey, let's make a checklist of the top uh, 15 places this is going to publish to. Cool. Blue sky, um, you know, threads, God knows, whatever. Cool. And Pete, if you can take yourself off the queue, I, I imagine I can as well, but you've already queued. I think, I think you should. And okay. And then Kevin, you are next in the queue. Okay. So that's now, right? That would be right this second, this moment. Yeah, uh, you're so queued up. Good. I, I want to build a neo book, uh, but I see it as one element of a more uh, diverse media strategy. So we have a thing that gets a fair amount of attention and will more that is a show I do with Stephanie, the black woman I build things with, and Michael Schumann, who's sort of the best known of the local economy authors. And there was 
a division between a group called Amoeba and Bali. And they broke into turfs, and he, he bridges them. So he brings in the localists. Uh, and then we have the economic justice folks. And we do a uh, – there's another guy doing it. But it, it's a uh, – we do a, a deep dive fund interview uh, that turns into a blog post in my newsletter sometimes turns into Michael is the one that has the greatest audience. He has about, uh, I think it's going on 10,000 people and subscribed to Main Street Journal. And he really writes. He doesn't do work. He he imagines himself an entrepreneur, but nothing ever happens. But he always writes. So. I'm I'm working with him to try to build something around him. We've got an admin who's putting some structure in it. It goes to the Impact Alpha, which is the big newsletter, and they've got a database for us that's common uh, that's called uh, <coughs> Community Currency. So I'm suggesting, you know, we hire a student intern to put some order to it and that we centralize on going to Michael. But this Neo book would be how you do this kind of community investing either for profit that makes that understands there's a cost of doing good that's called concessionary or philanthropic investing uh, where you give and that it, you know that gift is invested and comes back to your donor advice fund platform then we work with one that is the most you know it costs one twentieth of what the standard way to get in is and we've democratized the output down to five thousand dollars so it's the it's the most grassroots philanthropic, and, and, it, and it fills a key gap. It's the cheapest, most patient capital that you have to figure out where to slice it in. Uh, and so, and then there'll be a new experience because, so here's the deal. If you have a $5 million or more family foundation, you could do what we're doing now. And it was nothing because the money came back to your family foundation and it, you never felt it. If you have you know a million to seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in a uh, donor advice fund, you could do this you know five years ago at a hundred thousand dollars. Now you can do it you know for two hundred fifty dollars, and uh, so it's much more accessible. And um, I think it's going to be a real interesting game changer because this will be giving to invest by people who actually feel the money if they. Give 500 and in two years they have a thousand they feel it if they give 5,000 and in two years or three they have 10,000 they feel it and so this will be a new experience where donors will get their money back to give with again and invest it's going to be a really massive sea change and it'll be really attractive because it's the cheapest capital around so we need to explain to people everything about it and how it fits in with there are institutional things right above us, CDFIs, Community Development Finance Institutions, and there's uh, loan funds. So it, 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 but it's a new, it, it, it's a new piece of. If if you think of the capital stack as a layer cake, it's a new layer that people will really like. So I need a neo book that explains it all. Um, knowing you, Kevin, you've already put this online in some blog posts and some videos in different places. Do you, well, have, a, so I've do you got, have a collection of those? I've got a bunch of it in my wiki, and now I started using this thing called ChatGPT when, when Klaus sent it out the other day, and I've got two or three things that explains why the racial wealth gap is there. They do a good job of explaining what's already known. And so it's, it's, it's a, you know, why the racial wealth gap exists, what redlining means today, you know, uh, the fact that they didn't get GI loans, uh, you know, if they were black, you know, they, they didn't get the, 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 the guaranteed loans and what that means for how much, why they got so much more COVID in their neighborhoods, you know, all that stuff. So I, I'm, I'm doing a bunch of it. Yeah. But I need a place that is not my, my, I'm using my wiki as a link when I do stories or for other people to say, if you want to know what O'Brien, which is this really cool cooperative, that's also an investment bank on my wiki has more on them than their site does or any other site. Right. So it's starting to be used as, you know, Kevin will put the newest stories up there and the newest stuff about people that people are paying attention to. Okay. And, uh, and then our funds, you know, also will go and feed the wiki, but then I need a book where you can, I think you want to download chapters or something. I need a, a bigger assemblage than a wiki can handle that you could download and think about 
I think is the I, 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 that's what I think about is a a book that you could download chapters of. I think, but maybe Pete that's not. But. Handily, handily, Pete may have answers to that, and he's next in the queue. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, thanks. Uh, I, I like it, Kevin. Um, uh, so, uh, so we've got Klaus who's using AI to, to better, uh, better construct, um, uh, I'm going to say content, I think it's more complicated than that, but, uh, writing and thinking and ideas and, and stuff. Um, uh, and then Kevin, uh, is needing a way to maybe nuggetize is, is part of what we're talking about, nuggetize stuff and then keep it assembled in a way that makes it um, consumable in pieces and probably also consumable severally too. Um, I think, uh, and, and it's interesting here, Klaus saying, well, I've got the distribution, or I'm doing the distribution, I've got a LinkedIn newsletter and that seems to be doing okay. Um, uh, I, I still feel like most people who would come to Neobooks uh, don't, um, and then Jerry, it's a great question, you know, where do you publish first and how do you keep track of your materials and, and where are all the places that you need to publish? Maybe what, I'm, maybe what I feel like Neobooks needs is a Neobook on publication. Um, pub publicity, publication, audience. There's a, I've started some Neobooks ops pages on the OGM wiki. Um, which we could e we could easily uh, share and spread out and link you know link to each other and, and, do, and do that. Bless you. Um, I uh, I I won't be happy. <laughs> I won't be satisfied um, until it's not just wiki pages, um, but uh, but seeing the material of a neo book about where you do publishing, a neo book about soil health, a neo book about community finance. Um, until those actually move around the world and do something, um, I'm, I, I feel like we'll, I, I will feel like we have under, under succeeded, I guess. Um, okay. And, you know, and a new book about, uh, here's how you do publishing, here's how you do pub, uh, publicity, here's how you do, you know, um, and that book, that new book is moving around the world uh, in social media and newsletters and, and uh, blog posts and, and podcasts and stuff like that, you know. So borrowing a page from Klaus's book, um, it could be that there's a neo book that answers questions that isn't in the, that isn't a published book, but rather is a body of work. And you could say, hey, step me through the process of building a neo book and getting it out into the world. And it could answer with, you know, here. You know, you could in fact ask it to coach you through it and set up some plans for you. Uh, I like that a lot. And um, that's uh, many people are building GPTs to do that. Many people are, are building, uh, they, many people don't use the GPT framework for that. They use a mega prompt for that. Um, so they'll just publish uh, a whole workflow as a prompt that you can give to a GPT. And then the GPT will step you through uh, a workflow and, and you know, uh, knowledge about, about what, the, what the process entails. So back to Kevin's question and Klaus, I'll get to you in just a second. Um, back to Kevin's question about uh, I've got more material than fits in a neo book or than than, than works here. Um, I have a no. I didn't say that. What, what, were you I, asked? what was your I, question? I, I said it, it. It's more than fits in a wiki. I need to pull out lots of parts of the wiki into bigger chunks because uh, I go granular about people and businesses on the wiki. So. Um, I need a higher okay. level order of, so of he's of he's got a wiki. He needs a neo book, which helps him parcel that out. Somebody can download a chapter on a particular topic. Subtopic. Yeah. Okay. So right. we, may, and, we may just be the, talking about the same thing. And the link the in the neo book would go to the wiki too, because the wiki has more about them than their own site does. Okay. So for me, the neo book decomposes into wiki pages, wiki chunks, which are then yeah. Yeah. part of your corpus. The, the thing that the thing that I've got in my head is some kind of a squiggly outline around a one of your corpuses and i'm going to use corpus because it's an ugly word and it sort of fits what we're trying to say here but i can imagine that any one of us might have multiple corpuses or corpus i 
um, depending on the topic at hand. So if it was regenerative agriculture, if it was you know, food systems changing, whatever, Klaus might have a couple corpuses that overlap a bit. And that adding things into a corpus, thereby making them part of the domain that a GPT would, would be responsible for an answer from, would hmm. be a really useful thing, right? What is the squiggly outline around a body of stuff, a corpus? Now, a neobook is just a linear path through some of the nuggets that are in a corpus, great. And that manifests maybe as a book, but the whole corpus can act as a neo book without being linearized or without being limited to being a book because it's a body of work relevant to a particular topic that will help answer those questions better. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, I'm, so I'm, I'm really interested in the, the, the squiggly outline around a collection of works that we then use for a variety of different purposes. And in some cases it's linearized, like a presentation, like a PowerPoint or a book. And in other cases, it doesn't need to be linearized at all because it's a hypertext being um, improved by a community or because it's a corpus that's being used for uh, GPTs. I like that. Yeah. That that clarifies a couple of things in my head. That's where we're going, I think. So you got to do each of those things has got to make some sense. Yep. Where does that leave us? Um, and Klaus, you had a comment, sorry. Um, yeah. I think we're still skirting AI, right? Because the the when the, the model that you were just explaining still forces me to read a whole lot of stuff and I, I go. Well, yeah. I mean, you, you I'm reading a very specific uh, text, and then that text gets me to a wiki, so we have a deeper explanation. But I have a very unique problem, right? That is not flowing out of the middle of this. So I have to piece pieces together. AI will do that for you. I think so I didn't explain myself well, Klaus. I, I think um, what I mean is you could just throw documents into a corpus that you know are relevant. Nobody needs to read the whole corpus. The corpus then becomes the basis for your, GP, your particular GPT answering questions out of that work. You may want to write a book and publish a book out of it, but that's totally optional. Does that make more sense? But the challenge is to write a GPT that is sophisticated enough to answer questions of a specific nature. So for example, one of the GPTs I have developed is for TSPs, technical service providers, working as independent contractors for USDA. They're dealing with a unique body of, of work. So first of all, they have to go through a certification process. So the GPT is programmed to guide you through where you can find the materials, where you need to put in your application, and you can actually practice with it so you can pass your tests. So once you are certified, then you have to go to a farmer and you have to take an assessment of that particular farm and, and you know, go through a series of questions. So this is there are very unique situations that these uh, TSPs will run into because each farm is different. You know, the, the, the uh, uh, environmental conditions are different. The socioeconomic conditions are different. And so you can... You 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 have you now have a personal assistant basically, you know who knows pretty much everything that uh, it needs to know to guide you through this technical service provider uh, uh, mode. And if there's something you run into that it doesn't know, then you go back and you post a question, and I can then insert this into the tier, into the chat GPT and update it with that piece of knowledge that was missing. That's sort of the idea. Right. And so you can apply that for various uh, uh, for various uh, applications. You know, it can be uh, the same the same thing that does the TSP can also assist farmers with seed uh, selection and crop selection and and those kinds of things. So that's where I was going. So I don't want them to to have to go into any kind of reading. I mean, I want them to go into reading just you know, for general what's all out there. But then as they get into their day-to-day -day work, I want them to be able to just post the question, I'm running into this farmer, here's what the guy's saying, or here's what's happening, how should I respond to this? And then you get you get you know, a very intelligent answer to that question.
I, I want to suggest an, a yet another modality <laughs> cool. um, uh, for for what we're thinking of as new book conversations or something like that. New new book, you know, new book live. Um, uh, I'm working on uh, uh, community based uh, peer education and coaching. Uh, so uh, this, this it, it sounds like it kind of blends into where Klaus was. Uh, Klaus has got something that you can talk to that that answers your questions and moves you up the you know knowledge chain to be, be able to actually complete training or whatever and then come back and ask questions uh, 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 related to stuff in your field and the expert and the experts in the room come and help you. Um, Similarly to that, uh, I'm looking at, uh, excuse me, I think my dog is going to bark pretty soon. Um, looking at having a, a, a community, uh, the community of practitioners, I guess, community of practitioners are a community of learners that help each other through um, maybe not just one corpus, but several corpora uh, of related things. Corpora, thanks, elegant. <laughs> Um, Jose, please. What happened to the conversation we were having last week? And um, you were going to take the um, the uh, sorry <clears throat> brain fart. Take the, the recording that we had last week and uh, turn it into uh, some statements. That is a great question. I got stuck with the recording last week um, and didn't get back to that, but you are correct. Um, shit. Um, I dropped the ball on that, but um, let me reconstruct. Uh, man, I have, almost have to go back to the transcript from last week. Yeah. Go ahead, Jose. Yeah, no, I was just thinking that We've got some answers from that transcript that apply to the conversations we're having here um, that I think we need to document because we're, we're sort of starting at ground zero every week. And uh, should we work to uh, start that document um, now in real time? When, whenever, whenever we fall into, or whenever any of my groups fall into, oh, somebody, somebody's going to do it heroically offline and come back later. Um, I always worry, and I'd rather see the the team do that. So that is just the basic <laughs> question. I I like that, and here's what my notes in my brain. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, this is what. I wrote myself in my brain as notes from last week that I completely then forgot to do, Jose is right. Um, and because I've created a separate room, what I haven't done in Zoom is create separate um, rooms for our standing calls. But here I did. I created a new books call, uh, room. That means that the notes, if you look at the left, there's a, a notes field, uh, a notes app. Uh, the notes is different from chat and is a persistent document that we can see over time. So we could, I think, there might be other widgets that do this as well, but we might be able to use the notes as an agenda. And of course, I've only got 10 days left on this trial, and I don't know that I'm going to re-up for butter, but I have a feeling I might. Um, anyway, we could put we could use uh, butter notes for that to give us uh, to give us continuity between meetings. But that doesn't solve last week's transcript. Oh, nothing will solve last week's transcript problem except for somebody applying some energy to it and uh, doing what we talked about. It's pretty easy. Um, Peter, you're on mute. It's pretty easy to grab that. Once you grab the transcript, um, even even without pruning it, just who cares about pruning it? Just toss it into chat GPT and say, Break this up. Who's going to apply the energy and when? Well, if you toss us the, that, I can do it. Mm, let me find. I mean, it generally takes a little bit of time to, to clean yep. it up, but. Yeah. Uh, so I wonder if I can drop a, oh, here we go. How about that? 
Uh, I'm just learning how to do this in butter. So, um, meanwhile, uh, Kevin, you had a question. Yeah. <clears throat> um, how do I start a Neo book? Uh, I thought that's what this was about, but it doesn't, I'm not sure what this is about, <laughs> but, uh, except that it doesn't seem to have a memory and it doesn't have an agenda to follow and you're solving that. But what if I want to start a Neo book? I'm actually, uh, I can sit down, Kevin, and, and we can, I can talk you through what I did. Okay. Um, um, well, well, let's probably that's a good thing to do is just get sit down with somebody who can do it one on one because I, I, uh, you know, I built B two B software three times successfully, but I'm I kept Doyle Jones one at Gmail because it took me two times to figure out Gmail. So I figure out you know software that works for people who take two times to learn Gmail. So anyway, I, I, I will be able to do this, but I, I really would rather not make my uh, obvious errors in public. So yeah, let's let's set up some time to do that. I am proud yeah. to be the contagion vector that got Kevin onto Twitter way back when. It was amazing. <laughs> I didn't see any point in it. It was this long dinner. Why would I want it? 140 characters. What is that? What does that mean? Anyway, yeah, <clears throat> it was really very fun. And then it's like, oh my goodness, you know. Remember Twitter? How cool it was! Oh, back in the day. You know, it's still pretty darn good for a lot of stuff. It hasn't broken completely. I just went no. back, but I, but I refused to pay Musk for TweetDeck, and that was that was my axe for managing Twitter. So, Arr. yeah, I have multiple accounts on a couple different machines. Okay, well, great. I will. That's all, all of my question. I mean, it, so this group might want to think about what it is, which, which I guess includes, uh, you know, having an agenda that you look at ahead of time and keep up with, and then have a memory. Those are things that seem to have come up for me. Uh, and that would be ironic, since a lot of what OGM is about is having a memory and uh, some continuity. So how about that? All right. Is that what OGM is about? That's a piece of it. it yeah, open shared, global mind. Shared memory. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Okay. The oh, great. children thing. Yep. Yep. You're not. You're not off the mission here. You're. you're yeah. <laughs> well, good. I'm. I'm feeling a, a lot of sort of irony and uh, whatever <laughs> at this moment because, like, yeah, we should be doing this all, obviously all the time. Um, and one thing I don't, we tried at one point to have a common document for our chat and to replace the Zoom chat. That failed. Uh, here we have a chat and a notes field. I'm wondering whether that notes field could be connected to Massive Wiki, for example, so that the notes are output straight to GitHub and then become our standing notes there through the website. That would be pretty cool if it was a little bit more automatic. I'm kind of looking at how, how do we string something together that we'll actually look at and, and have available. And I got to go. This has been really helpful. Thank you. Class Thanks, Kevin. Up. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Bye -bye. See ya. It looks like Pete has already fed the, the transcript to the maw of the beast. Not no? me. No. Oh. It's Jose. Oh, it's Jose. Oh, good. Cool. Well, hell. Can you paste that into the notes document too? Since you've got it in your copy buffer, or I can. But I I appreciate your your willingness and enthusiasm to try the notes document and and that's even more fractured than than yeah. It, yeah, it's better to I'm keep not notes seeing on anything place. on on butter that would make me try to get a whole bunch of people to start using butter rather than than Zoom. I mean it's it there isn't the 10x that would that people would go, yeah, I'll use something other than Zoom for this. A lot of it's for facilitators. So yeah. but I'm a facilitator and I wouldn't do it. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> We had also discussed setting up some kind of a portal, you know, where the the idea of new books is explained, and then you have uh, entry port entry points to the different new books, 
and then each new book uh, has its own place where you can have your your articles published or your book uh, published, uh, and you can have a chatbot attached to it that's now linked to this new book. Meaning, if you want to talk uh, you now about Kevin's very particular topics or Stuart uh, or you know, or others, you can then engage with this chat GPT uh, to. Uh, um, Know, to to follow up on this specific topic, um, I'm I'm just having challenges with ChatGPT uh, being completely being so unprotected, you know, um, and so I've been looking for a user interface, but there's nothing intuitive that uh, that I came up with. And mostly everything is like really complicated with changing email and with changing web addresses and stuff. Um, none of that seems to to really work. Completely off topic, uh, but Klaus, um, uh, Claude 3.5 is finally at GPT 4.0 level, kind of, and it's got uh, it's got things that are bad, things that are worse. But so so now I'm starting to use a multi uh, multi model uh, interface, which talks to not just Chat G, not just OpenAI, but Claude and whatever else. Um, uh, to, to back to my uh, hobby horse uh, uh, pub publicizing, public publicizing, um, publishing, uh, yeah, getting attention, publicizing actually, uh, uh, and and kind of uh, Klaus mentioned a neo books portal. Um, uh, a domain name is is also a key thing uh, nowadays uh, in a publication pub publish publicizing strategy. Um, there ought to be a NeoBooks domain. Do we want, so we've had multiple conversations through the NeoBooks calls about the word books in NeoBooks and should it be a book, et cetera, et cetera. Do we, do we just want to get something that has NeoBooks in it? I'm happy to do that because I, I do that. Or do we, do we want a different name for the project? I, my branding, you know, my, my, the advice I've gotten from great branding people over the years is, um, you know, sp spend some time thinking about your brand and weed out the obvious clunkers. Um, but at some point, nothing is going to be perfect. Uh, so you you know you pick the, the best one that you can after a, a reasonable amount of time, which we've had a reasonable amount of time, and go with it. Uh, use all of its shortcomings as uh, secret powers, um, and just figure out how to accommodate. So mm -hmm. I I don't see any reason not to use new books. I mean I I could argue at length for why books and their sucks, but. Um, and and we've gone through the whole rigmarole that books is just bait, et cetera, et cetera. Um, mm -hmm. We could have a sexier name like Idea Sex, or something like that, which is kind of what we're kind of encouraging here. But hey, I think that would be a turnoff for a lot of. That's a, probably true. A lot of situations. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Be, I mean, it's it's sexier. Literally, yeah. um, Klaus, you were in the queue. Did you already say the thing you were in the queue for? I think Klaus just stepped away. Sorry. Did you uh, did you read the what came out of uh, ChatGPT? Very quick scan. Let's give it a read. Yeah, it is like everything from an LLM. It's uh, wonderfully written and um, moderately in informational. <laughs> yeah. So then the question is now: What? Uh, where does this go? Um, uh, the the content is fine. Uh, the next question is what you do with the content, and if it needs any tweaks. But the more important thing is now what. Not is it good enough? Yeah, and I would argue it's it, it's less about whether it's presentable or anything like that. But are these the things that we want to pick on? Are these the things that we're saying neo books are? And is this where we're going to put the flag up on? I think this is a starting list. I don't know that I, this covers the waterfront. I, I like your question, Jose. And I think there's a question before that, which is, what? where does this go? And the answers to your question depend on where this goes, right? Is this an internal mission statement, mission vision value statement? Is it an external statement? Is it? So I, I guess borrowing actually from another group I'm in, um, I what I think should happen. <laughs> 
if I were a benevolent dictator. Um, what I th I think should happen, Jerry, uh, you're a benevolent dictator, so maybe you can make this happen. Maybe you would make something else happen. Um, there should be a NeoBooks domain. Um, uh, the domain should have a manifesto. Uh, the manifesto should look, um, I am currently uh, enamored once again of agilemanifesto.org. Um, if you look at the way they designed it, um, uh, the the principles, the kind of is similar to this list, the principles are actually on the, the, an inside page, the second page. The first page has got a condensed summary of the principles in four statements. And in each of the four statements, they've highlighted the first part of that statement. So the Agile Manifesto has a hierarchical construction which lets you come to agilemanifesto.org mm -hmm. and go, I get it. These are the four things that are important. And look, they, have, they explain each of those four things. And look, here's a place where I can click and get more. And then they've uh, translated it to a bunch of languages, which is, I think is another thing that should happen very quickly. Um, so I, you know, NeoBooks is a thing. It should it should explain itself pretty clearly. An explanation has to be a hierarchical set of uh, unfolding uh, statements of longer length for different parties, different different audiences. There is not a woman among the founders. Uh, it's fun talking to some of the founders about that. Hmm. Yeah, and and it's not fun talking to some of the founders about that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> at least a good percentage of the founders will will say that the whole thing is hopelessly out of date and shouldn't be dependent on for anything anymore. And I, you know, Agile Manifesto has got um, foibles and problems and stuff like that. It's from a different era. You're pointing uh, to it as a model. Yes, exactly. Which is and, and, and good sense. to your question, Peter, I would say that it shouldn't go anywhere until we can say this is it not because we should slow anything down but because for months we've been talking about everything but not saying this is it and so until we say this is it i don't think we should move forward because any attempt to move forward just brings us back to is this it and uh, then back, I, is this it and there's just a cycle if, of if of i may ending. ask um uh who's we Pardon me. Uh, who is the we there until we agree? Somebody. I don't. I, to be, to be honest, I don't really care. Yeah. I, I I don't think it needs to be you know exhaustive or whatever. That somebody needs to say this is it. It's not forever, but this is it for now. It it ha it has everything we need it to be for now. And if anybody says it doesn't have this, then okay, we'll talk about that. But <laughs> well, actually, that I, I agree. The the way to to say that is, oh, you've joined us. Thank you. <laughs> and now make it better. Help us make it better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Jerry, do you have a, a we in mind? Um, I think the we is uh, regular participants in these calls, and I think I might be because I'm the spark of this thing. I might be a super we in this case, and in, yep. in the sense of kind of the, the hub of it. Uh, and I'm, I'm cool with that if other people are. And I'd love to have a document that we can all improve and check off on. I, I, I think that would be awesome. And it, it should live on a website um, that looks like a NeoBook thing. I'm, I'm, I'm on board. I'm can, we, can we get that done in July? Yes. Yeah. So if I, if I may, um, just just to to react to Kevin's enthusiasm, right? To get into this, I mean, we got something here. This is really this could really be something, but you know, because because more people like Kevin who are not who are who are you know, challenged techno from a techno um, technologically, just like I am, right? I mean, you know, I can't really even begin to think about building a user interface. I have no clue how that works. Um, but the, the, um, uh, for, for uh, practitioners like we are, you know, to, to embrace the, the, this AI tool and figure out how I can make this thing work for me and build a relationship with it and put it to use is an extremely powerful thing. See, this is what, what I want to do now working with this uh, 
uh, with this consortium here, which I'm you know, meeting with tonight, um, I would like to host this GPT and then, and then uh, uh, have membership-based uh, users who, who are in the field, who are working in practical ways, start engaging with it. Then we can train, we can teach classes on how to use it you know, and how to engage with it most productively. And you, you now increase the productivity of uh, line, line workers, multifold. You know? um, and this is basically what companies doing, like Sam Sarah, you know, the company that my son is working for. It's completely AI based. Now it's, they're using uh, enterprise, um, and they are they are bringing this down, down, down to the uh, to the mechanic level, right? So a mechanic can go to the AI and, and uh, scan in a picture of a part that doesn't work, and then the AI will tell them, "Well, here's how you replace this thing," you know, or, or "Here's how you troubleshoot it." It's that level of, of sophistication that you can achieve you now. But you have to start, and and so uh, there is this throughput, you know, where knowledge uh, um, uh, can be made accessible uh, to to uh, uh, people who don't have any any great training in this, or or who just need a, a, a lot of assistance. You know? And the interesting thing, our clients will be the Kevins, okay. Because for OGM, if we can attract people like Kevin, who, who are uh, uh, in the field, who are working in practical ways, uh, and get them and get them excited about just like Kevin is all excited about, man, this thing really works. Um, how do I how do I really pull it put it together? You know, you find that, and it could have it could have a great compounding impact. There's neobooks.media, neobooks.digital, neobooks.design, which is 70 bucks a year for some reason. I guess the design domain costs more. Those are all available. Neobooks.com, OOX.com is available for 12 bucks a year. We could just spell it differently and avoid the overlap with the neobook.com website, which already exists. But that loses the book's sensibility, in some yeah. sense. Uh, neo-books.com is available. Uh, you can do... Um, Neobooks.me. Uh, which doesn't sound right. Yeah. Uh, Neobooks.org. It's available? Hover says it is. Oh, let me see. Yeah. Books that are, 12 bucks a year. Done. Room. Okay, done. I'll Daddy's got it for 10 bucks. I will I will get that. Dot org it is. Yeah. Sounds great. Cool. We got one thing done. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe there'll be more. Not for lack of trying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, interesting. So Squarespace is going to be charging me 20 bucks a year. They give me a first year discount to eight bucks. So I'm on Squarespace, unfortunately, because Google Domains sold Google sold Google Domains to Squarespace. Did did you buy it yet? I have not bought it yet. Um my go to is Dynadot, but Dynadot is fine. I, I would I, go for Hover. I was going to maybe fall back to Hover. Yeah, yeah I, I use Hover, but sometimes it's I ridiculous how, how, you know, the other day I was buying one. It was going to be 50 bucks, and I could get it on GoDaddy for a buck 99. So for the first yeah. year, it's worth the trouble of a buck 99. And then if I want it, I'll transfer it over to Hover. Interesting. I don't remember why I got disenchanted with, uh, with Hover. Hover, well, Hover is reliable and um, not, great not necessarily. Company, you know, so, like so Hover wants sixteen dollars for neobooks.org. Right, it's worth it. 
it's worth it because uh, so would our dot orgs normally 12 bucks elsewhere 10 yeah. bucks 10 bucks i've never paid 10 bucks for a domain anywhere i paid a dollar uh, the other day another oh. another cheap one another good well another cheap one is uh name cheap so um, dynadoc you, you said should, you should read yeah go with hover uh you should read uh our, our old list search for hover in our old list oh okay well i know hover is elliot so yeah so you're saying hover 16 bucks fine or are you saying i should keep keep trying something else it's it's not worth saving four bucks yeah or five bucks or six bucks well i'm saving four bucks more than i would save if i stayed with square squarespace <clears throat> where unfortunately all my Mains have ended up. I, there's no reason to stay with Squarespace. So I, I should basically suck all the domains out of Squarespace to some other hosts, yeah. is what you're, what you're recommending, which sounds yeah. like probably what I'll do. The um, uh, name Namecheap uh, was one of the ones that, that we we talked about on that list uh, a while, and uh, Elliot basically said, you know, I, spend a little bit more money and um, and keep the internet domains a little bit less cluttered and junky. And he also said, I'm, I'm, I'm in conflict, so you don't have to listen to anything I say, but. Cool. Yeah, right. I, I, um, used, uh, I use Hover for all my keepers and, and uh, GoDaddy for my tests, since I do hundreds of tests a year. It, it adds up. Yep. I shouldn't say hundreds, dozens. I have to reset my hover password. Um, I have a call at the top of the hour. Shall we close this call now so that I have a moment to finish this task before my next call? Yes. Sounds good. Sounds awesome. Show, guys. Thank you all. This is really helpful. Jose, thank you for keep pointing us back toward actually getting things done. And everybody, thank you for helping getting things done. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao.